Rock 102, Springfield Classic Rock. It's 535 and Guns N' Roses with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. Uh, it is going to be, uh, well, you know what? It's just going to be a day of weather. I wish I could tell you, but the internet's uh, crawling at a snail's pace this morning. Well, this is what I got. Uh, it's going to be sunny today and a high of 64. I'll agree with you. Did you have a choice? Was there was there going to be a, an argument about this? I don't know. Some window keeps popping up on my computer like I like I should sign into something, but then it goes away before it even shows me what it is. It's like a yeah. It's like a screen tease. It's a uh, it's a brutal day with technology. Uh-huh. Anyway, listen to this. Uh, the daily podcast can be brought to you by Marcot Ford. They got your back for sales, service, parts, and rentals. Marcot Ford in uh, in Holyoke. An open line Friday today. Oh wow. And, Good open line. Yeah, that's uh, that'll be very exciting. And plus, a comedian from uh, from Roar tonight, uh, Brianna Woodward, will yes. be joining us sometime today. Yes, and we'll uh, we'll talk uh, about the show last night. At uh, what show was this? Believe it or not, there's this place in Chicopee that offers dinner and a comedy show for twenty bucks. Really? Yeah, I have never heard of this. Well, we'll we'll talk all about it a little later on. Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. Would you mind saying that again? Rock 102, Springfield's Classic Rock. It's 552. And Rat with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. It is uh, going to be, uh, I will tell you in just a second, uh, once the... Oh, yeah, here we go. Oh, ready? Yeah. The, the internet has loaded. I can tell you what the weather's going to be. It's going to be mostly sunny today with a high of 63. Tomorrow, rainy with a high of 60. It's 42 right now in downtown Springfield. Hollywood Trash is brought to you by Aqua Pump, an expert in all water supply systems from the well to the pump and into the house. Okay. Oh, yeah, there you go. Oh, uh, wait. Let's try this again. Okay, yes. All right. All right. Why, don't you, why don't you read that again? Uh, Hollywood Trash is brought to you by Aqua Pump, an expert on all water supply systems, from the well to the pump and into the house. Do, 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 do you want to read it again? Hollywood Trash is brought to you by Aqua Pump, uh, an expert on all water supply systems, from the well to the pump and into the house. Third time to jar. There we go. Somehow you still care about what's happening in Hollywood. So, from Tinseltown, 3,000 miles away, it's Steve Nagel's Hollywood Trash. Well, the demand was so huge for Taylor Swift The Eras Tour that the decision was made to hold preview screenings last night, a day before the movie was scheduled to open, and that might have been a mistake. Multiple sources say theaters were not happy with having to prepare for potential mass demand with so little advance. The irony is the demand probably wasn't that great at all. Due to the last-minute call for the advanced screenings, theaters were reporting weak crowds. A theater in Burbank said some of its Thursday shows had sold 4 to 12 seats. Taylor wanted people standing, singing, and having a ball at these shows like they're at an actual concert. But that vibe probably won't be achieved with four people in the room. It sounds like last night's take might be a little weak, especially for a movie that's already sold more than $100 million in advanced uh, tickets for the weekend. But... If you listen to the Swifty world, everybody wants to see it on 1013 because that's Taylor's lucky number. So why wouldn't you want to see it in today? Nobody, everybody already bought the tickets. Even if you had advanced screening. I'm not going today. I am. Today? Yeah, why not? I'm going at a later time, you know, when the crowds die down. Uh, that is not going to happen. That sure hoping mo- for it. I bet you those movie theaters will be packed for the noon, three, six, uh, and nine showing tonight. Yeah, boy. Uh, maybe uh, Taylor and her team should have thought this through a little bit better. As for details on the movie itself, filming took place in August during three shows at SoFi Stadium in Inglewood, California, for her record-breaking Eras Tour. And if it matters to any concerned parents, her concert film is rated PG-13. Why, PG-13, why, what, is, she, is she using foul and coarse language? She probably says the S word. Come on. Well, some of her lyrics, uh, she uses the F-bomb. I know. I've been uh, noticing that, and I don't approve. Well, that 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 was from her uh, folklore, you know, or Enchanted or whatever the hell album it was where she's swearing. I know, but you know, there are some people that when they swear, they seem so out of place. Like she, her. Yeah, she seems like th- 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 these are not words that she would normally use, and that, if they do, they, they feel uncomfortable. That sweet little innocent voice. Exactly what I'm talking about. She should, she, she should no, uh, garbage shouldn't be coming out of her, her mouth. No. Only going into it. Travis Kelsey. (laughs) (laughs) 
don't know if it's garbage. It might just be junk. Oh, uh, and if you're uh, if you're uh, really a big Swifty fan, you're going to be missing five songs from the Eras Tour that will not be featured in the movie. Archer, Tis the Damn Season, No Body, No Crime. I actually like that one. Cardigan, I mm-hmm. like Cardigan too. And Wildest Dreams. I like uh, I like three out of five uh, of those. Boy, that's going to be tough. Is there going to be like a director's cut? I down the road so. I, that, that we can buy on DVD. Uh, I hope. Well, they they said one of the songs plays at the end, but it's just over the credits, and she, you don't actually see her perform it. Gotcha. Whatever. Come on. Yeah, I want to see. All, I want to see all of the Taylor Swift. Uh, I don't want to leave there feeling like there's unfinished business. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No. Yeah. You want to finish the business before you leave. That's my intention. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, Halloween, the franchise. Yes. Is the next uh, horror franchise to get the TV series treatment. No writer is attached yet. It's still pretty early on. The TV rights were recently secured by Miramax, which are the same guys who produced the recent Halloween trilogy. The idea in this new series will launch a cinematic universe. Plot details have yet to be announced, so it's not clear where in Michael Myers' timeline the story takes place. Uh, I'm just going to go on a limb and say this takes place at the part of Michael Myers' lifetime. Where yeah. he's very angry and possibly a homicidal maniac. Yeah, yeah, and he's wearing that uh, hockey mask. Was it a? Ho- it's not a. It's a not a hockey mask. What is? Michael Myers wears what? Is it's it, a hockey mask. Is it a hockey mask? I believe so. What am I thinking of the Friday the Thirteenth guy? Was that a hockey mask? Oh, that's a hockey mask. Jesus, it's so hey, hard. Hey, you to- know what? I don't even watch any of this crap, so it doesn't really matter. To me. They all kind of blend. Together, I mean, I can't remember the 1970s, you know, Friday the 13th from Halloween half the time. Anyway, what about the Scream guy? What kind of mask does he wear? I don't know. Mask, Scream mask. Yeah, there's too many people with these masks. What about mask? What about Rocky Dennis? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, At least Freddy Krueger had a look. He did. You know, a very distinct look, like a like a uh, an odd Waldo sweater. But he never had to shield his face. No. One of the creepiest scenes, and I think it was number four, The Nightmare on Elm Street 4. I was a little kid when I saw that. <laughs> and he was, like, eating, he was, like, picking up uh, victims, like, as if they were meatballs and eating yeah. them off of his uh, his finger blades, whatever. Nothing but creativity in that thing. Man, some good stuff to keep you in therapy for oh, the rest yeah. of your life. Hey, you remember that guy who got smashed between two exploding cars in midair then fell 20 feet to the ground while practicing a stunt for America's Got Talent Extreme? I'm going to say yes. All right. Well, his name is Jonathan Goodwin, and he miraculously survived all that chaos, and now he's suing NBC. Who thought? Goodwin says the network and the show's producers kept encouraging contestants to perform bigger and more dangerous stunts while cutting corners on safety to save money, and it nearly cost him his life. Jonathan says he dislocated his spinal cord, lost his left kidney, Mm. suffered third-degree burns, fractured his legs, ribs, and shoulders, and he'll be in a wheelchair for the rest of his life. Well, you always got to (laughs) go for the deepest pockets if you're going to file a lawsuit. Yeah. In this case, it's NBC. Right. You file a lawsuit against NBC. You don't file a lawsuit against the guy that installed the floor mats. Well, you, I mean, but, you inclu- look- but you include the guy who in the lawsuit until the lawsuit dismisses all those people. Right, but you don't put all your legal eggs in that basket. No, you gotta you gotta put all different legal baskets. Yes, with, with different legal eggs. Yes, in different locations. That's exactly my point. It's a legal egg Easter hunt. Exactly. Yeah, it's been. Uh, yeah, he's uh, still suffering from mental, physical, and emotional injuries. <laughs> but man, the accident was awesome. That was killer. Still talking about it even today. Uh, Grove High School, the school Anne Hathaway's character attended in The Princess Diaries, is on the market for $6.5 million. And here's some trivia for you. It's not even really a school. It's a four-bedroom home in San Francisco. It is? Yeah. It's a four-bedroom home in San Francisco. It's built on the edge of uh, Presidio, the national park at the foot of the Golden Gate Bridge. It's over 100 years old, and only the exterior was used for the movie. But you can uh, you can get it if you want to. Wow! And here and here I was thinking that was a school. Kim Kardashian has an acting role in what critics are calling a raunchy new American hor- American horror story, where she plays a publicist who is all about sex, money, and power. Really? She must have something to say. Oh my God! The last time I started in uh, starred in something that raunchy was when Ray J basted the moose knuckle with clap butter in that sex tape you can purchase on YouPorn for thirty nine ninety five. <laughs> you got a baste. You just got a baste.
Well, it keeps it juicy. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Uh, Caitlin? Well, I never got that done and dirty with your mother, Chris Kim, but I once dined on the pink snapper. Okay. I glazed my eyebrows into the goo lagoon. What are remember, you trying to say? Remember that with book shields? I do. Uh, what I'm trying to say is after I put on my lobster bib and got down on my elbows, I found myself face-to-face -face with the biggest fish smile since Abe Vigoda got his Barney Miller spinoff. <laughs> Wow. That's a mouthful. <laughs> that's what she said. And that's your Hollywood trash on Rock 102. Ah, yeah. For 306 yards compared to Russell Wilson, only managed 95 passing yards. Or the stat that breaks down the four times that Russell Wilson was sacked by the Kansas City Chiefs or about the two interceptions that he throw. I know that's still not what people are interested in. What they really care about is this. If the Kansas City Chiefs continue to play like this, then there is a very good chance that Taylor Swift could be going to the Super Bowl. Now, I know it's only week six of the NFL season, but let's not kid ourselves. The Chiefs have the best record in the conference, and while last night was hardly perfect, at least Taylor got to enjoy all those free white claws and delicious hot dogs in the luxury suite sitting right next to her boyfriend's mom. Now, if it happens that Taylor gets to go to this year's Super Bowl and watch her boyfriend play, this will be her second Super Bowl appearance in a row. Last night, uh, last year, of course, she played the Super Bowl halftime show, but back then there were no white, white claws in the luxury suite. There were no free hot dogs. All she did is her business and left. This year could be different because this year she's in love. Now, I should point out that tickets to the Super Bowl last year averaged about $6,000 per ticket, which is more than double what it cost to see Taylor Swift live. This year, you could see the Super Bowl and Taylor Swift at the same damn time for virtually the same price. Suddenly, booking Usher for the Super Bowl halftime show seems like an afterthought. It's completely underwhelming. But watching Taylor Swift pound out a couple of Trulies and a plate of Super Bowl nachos, that's something totally worth showing out that kind of money to see. And if you get to see a football game too, get out of here. Let me tell you something. For all the people who complain about the NFL's Taylor Swift coverage, listen up. Mind your own damn business. It's the biggest damn story in sports all season long, and since the Patriots certainly won't be going to the Super Bowl this year, this is all that some people have to look forward to, and I happen to be one of those people. But hey, and if my yapping, sports brought to you by Rocky's Ace Hardware. You know, you can paint your own kitchen, but I guarantee you got a lot of questions along the way. That's why you go to Rocky's. At every Rocky store, there's at least one trained paint, paint expert to guide you through your project. Good people, paint people. At every Rocky's Ace Hardware. I'm back. That's my view from the couch. Rock 102, Springfield's Classic Rock at 614 and uh, uh, Van Halen with yep. Bax and Nickel on Rock 102. Led Zeppelin or Van Halen? I, I almost I, I, said I, I, Led Zeppelin. I almost said Led Zeppelin. Uh, you know what? It's Friday. We don't, uh, we're just like kind of, we call it in on Fridays because it's, we, we, we don't want to be here and you no. don't want to be here, but we have to be here to entertain you. That's why we do Open Line yeah. Friday and we'll hear, hear that after 8 o'clock yeah. today. Uh, 63 and sunny for a high today. Tomorrow, rainy high of 60. It's 42 in downtown Springfield. Oh, listen, hey, before you begin, let me just yeah. uh, point this out. Uh, it's Steve Nagel's birthday. Whoa! Hey, happy birthday, buddy. Happy birthday to you. It's, it's not that... I don't like the birthdays. Yeah. I just don't like saying how old I am. How old are you? Tell me how you... Th oh, I know you know how old I am. Uh, to, uh, what, how, what do I look? What do I look? <sighs> See, you got me You got me all uh, bamboozled because you, you, you trimmed your beard down. I, now I you got like get, a baby face. That was an accident. It that, always is. I, I, I wound up like doing this one little extra thing here and yeah. then all of a sudden I look like I had mutton chops like yep. I was like I was gonna start reading stuff from the 1800s you yeah. know <laughs> like oh when you, when you trim your beard and it looks like you've been in an industrial accent sometimes me, you just got to go way down I was gonna be like meet me at the cracker barrel for a big beer of root beer <laughs> my friend but I I cut it this and then I'm yeah. like I gotta trim the whole thing now 46 45 shut up yeah, really yeah, 45, 45 yeah. you're only 45 I remember 45 like it was 12 years ago. Still alive at 45. I know. Well, hey, what listen. What are you going to do? You're not dead yet. Halfway through the 40s. 
and they've been pretty good to you so far, haven't they? Yeah, yeah, they, they have. <laughs> you know, one of the one of the uh, I, I did a comedy show last night. I don't know if you ever heard of this place, but it's a place in Chicopee. Yeah, that offers dinner and a comedy show for a mere twenty dollars. Shut up! Yeah, yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah, listen, we'll talk more. Why about has this? It. Why has this been such a secret? We'll talk more about it later. But you know the uh, the Loft Comedy Club uh, show last night that was great. But I, one of the things <laughs> I talked about was like uh, the Twenty Two News website. When you get to a guy who's my age, and you go on the Twenty Two News website, and you're looking at all these hot anchor reporter chicks right and then you look at their bio and it says 1997 and i'm like oh my god did i just commit an internet sex crime or something <laughs> <laughs> like it makes you feel old it makes you feel uh very old but, i uh, for the last i'm gonna say dozen years or so yeah i have been old enough to be most news people's father yeah, well, I mean, I mean, that thing, you put that in your head because you're because you're not that far away from it either. When you realize I'm old enough to have been the father for this entire staff of journalists. Well, I mean, I could be. I I think I could be. A lot of them are yeah. twenty one, twenty two. Technically, yes. And I could have technically been their dad. Uh, even when I was at thirty five, I could have been somebody's dad in Palmer. So I mean, you know, it's. <laughs> True. Somebody's, you know, who's who's in their twenties. Yeah, and much yeah, like Palmer, yeah. you would have you would have been uh, right. You would have been uh, delinquent and uh, oh, absolutely right. Of course, yeah, yeah but absent. Uh, but yeah, uh, today's today's my birthday. Yeah, you got uh, you got it's you know it's a Friday. You got big plans. Yeah, Friday the thirteenth. I was born on a Friday the thirteenth. So. And yet, no bad luck has ever followed you. No, no, not a not a not a moment of uh, of bad luck. Well, I don't know. You turn on the news, and then they're telling you to stay inside all day. But I'm going to the uh, the Taylor Swift era store tonight. <laughs> Man, what a great way to celebrate your birthday! Listen, I don't let terrorism scare me. I just let, I just go. I just go out. Well, you, you've already knocked a, a terror cell off of its. Uh, foundation once oh, at the uh, cumberland farm yes and if you were at the show last night you heard the entire story of how that happened yeah speaking of which yeah. uh and we'll talk about this obviously later yeah um you know it's open line friday i would i would love to hear someone from someone who want to be another show well, last night i want to hear how the comedy show was i want to hear how the 20 dollar uh, buffet dinner was uh i'll tell you how the comedy show was uh the, the the comedians were all great every single one of them uh they got up there and we actually heard from uh, uh katie arroyo and brian plum who are going to be at oh. our uh, roar show oh good on uh november uh second second november 2nd so uh so they very both very funny people i know you've seen brian plum before yes i think right i and, believe uh, i have katie arroyo very very funny she's uh she's right here from longmeadow so how about that? A right, comedian you're... from Longmeadow? <laughs> no, oh, wait a minute. Maybe maybe the... he... No, he's from Longmeadow. She's from... So... I, don't, you know, I don't even know. I don't know where they're from. They were funny. That's uh, all. Longmeadow's full of very funny people. Really? I laugh at those people all day. I would say funny looking people, if you know what oh, I'm yeah, saying. It's, I'm, not, I'm not judging a book by its cover. I'm just saying their actions and words you ever see those speak l- louder than all of it. The ladies that go into the shot shop, they come out and they, they're like, all of a sudden, their lips are like 10 pounds bigger than they were before they yeah. went in there. And no one can smile. Well, no, but 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 it's 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 permanent duck face. <laughs> I can take an Instagram photo. Come on, now's the so, time. Now is the time. Yeah, but uh, yeah, great show last night uh, over in Chicopee. Uh, I did thirty minutes. I couldn't believe I did thirty minutes in a row. In a row, and you know what? Um, I was I was rusty. I had some stuff because I really haven't done like lengthy appearances like that yeah. usually it's five minutes i got a i got a good solid five minutes of course 30 minutes is a good long time you don't, re- you don't realize how long that is until you're already out of your material by minute seven yeah th- uh, th- 30 minutes was was pretty long and i actually probably could have gone a little bit longer too because i had some more stuff that i didn't even get to and that's the hard part that's the hard part about trying to remember everything yeah and I make it part of the act. I mean, I bring notes with me on my phone, and I just, you know, acknowledge that I'm being unprofessional, but <laughs> I also acknowledge I don't really care. Right. So whatever. Yeah, I mean, you're coming to – it's $20 for the dinner and a show. Come on. Yeah, I will say, uh, you know, I've only been over there, there once when the, the Mark Norman show yeah. uh, happened. And that crowd, for a midweek crowd, was ramped the hell up. Like, they could not have been more excited to be out – yeah. And at a comedy show, and it was jammed. Was it upstairs or downstairs? They had it downstairs. Okay, so this was upstairs. There was about 87 people there last night. 
That's great. Yeah, and uh, I, I listen. I got to thank all the people that come out and support this uh, dead end side hustle that I got going on here, <laughs> because people, you know, they listen to the show and, yeah. and they're fans of the show and they're fans of the comedy and they want to hear all the things that we can't say here on the air. And boy, did we talk about some doozies last night! Oh, I bet you did. But uh, but that that's the beauty of it. That's that's our little tease. I tell you. Come see a show, and we will we will deliver uh, of the uh, of the questionable material. Yeah, may not be a great show, but it no. will be a show. That's right. Well, this is a show, <laughs> sort of for what it is. Sure, for what it has been. Yeah, you know what I'm getting you for my birthday? What a new co-host. Perfect. Yeah, there you go. Oh, that would be great. Yeah, that would be. I could use one. Well, you know, it's been uh, months since I had one. Uh, you got all kinds of people around here. You got that guy who does the floors, and then uh, <laughs> the other guy who does the wires. <laughs> Anybody could do this job. Yeah. <laughs> well, apparently that's been the that's been the belief system for yeah. quite a while. Well, there you go. It's six twenty two with Bax and Nagel on Rock one hundred two. Family Ford event. Rock one hundred two Springfield's classic rock. It's 628 with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. Uh, it is going to be sunny with a high of 63. Tomorrow, rainy with a high of 60. It's 42 right now in downtown Springfield. Uh, join me on Sunday. I'm going to be at Cigars for Soldiers at the uh, Chicopee Portuguese American Club. By the way, you don't have to be from Chicopee. You don't have to be Portuguese yeah. or American to go. It's going to be a great event. There's a steak dinner, 2 to 7. Uh, Cottonwood Fifth Wheel is going to be there. Loads of great uh, raffle prizes, like a really big load of it. And uh, it, it goes all, all to benefit a great cause. Cigars what, for Soldiers this Sunday. What uh, Sunday? Sunday. Sun, Sunday what time? Uh, two to seven. And oh. uh, if you want to get tickets, uh, we strongly urge you to get them in advance. There's an Eventbrite uh, page for Cigars uh, number four and Soldiers. You'll have a great time. Uh, I might I might do that. I you should. Do, I, sh- I should. It's a nice, I, it's I, a nice, nice event. I could, I could enjoy a nice smoke. Sure you do. A nice uh, big... Uh, Cuban cigar? Do you, you sell be, Cuban cigars? I don't think. They... Or is that illegal still? <laughs> they they sell good cigars though. They're, 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 uh, you know, the, the the cigar room is usually the ones that uh, that come. Oh, so they got yeah. Okay. They got good All stuff. Right. Uh, hey, do you wanna do you wanna laugh? Sure. All right. It's Bax and Nagel's joke of the day. I'm funny how I mean funny like I'm a clown. I amuse you. On Rock 102. I make you laugh. Springfield's <laughs> classic rock. I'm, I'm going to pretend here I have a girlfriend, okay? Okay. All right. Uh, I've seen a few jokes about dwarfs recently, and, I, and I'm sick of it. My girlfriend has dwarfism and is kinder and works harder than anybody I know. She deserves respect, and she shouldn't be treated so poorly by the rest of you jerks out there. <laughs> In fact, yes. to make it up to her tonight, I'm going to make her a lovely meal, pour her a glass of wine, and run her a nice hot sink. <laughs> Yeah, because she's so tiny, she's tiny that she fits right in the sink. Why waste all the water ah, in the tub? Yeah, that's right. That's what I was saying. Ah. Bax and Nagel. 634 with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. It's time for news. It's brought to you by Gary Rome Hyundai. Uh, technicians get up to a $5,000 sign-on bonus right now. Learn more at GaryRomeHyundai.com slash family. Here's local radio icon Steve Nagel. Thanks, Bax. A man from Springfield found guilty of kidnapping and raping an 11-year-old girl was back uh, in I'm sorry, back in 2020, was sentenced yesterday. Miguel Rodriguez was convicted in a jury waived trial last month on several charges, including kidnapping and sexual assault. He was sentenced to at least 57 years in prison, 30 to 35 years on the kidnapping charge and 25 years for, uh, for each of the two counts of aggregated rape to be served at the same time, two and a half years for reckless endangerment, followed by five years of probation. He's uh, how old? Uh, he is in his I, 30s. Something like that. So, you know, he'll be 80-something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, that five years of probation at 82, uh, that's going to be a hard time. Yeah, but uh, to be quite honest, uh, I think even that's a light sentence. Listen, you don't have to tell me about, you know, when you when you hear about people with sex crimes against children. Yeah. I mean, sex crimes in general. It's, yeah, but, know, but in particular, but, but something like this. Something like this where, you know, uh, how horrific it was. It doesn't seem like there is enough justice for these people. It really doesn't. Yeah, I, I mean, that's you're just absolutely the, right. It's just the way the laws are written. You, I mean, like you got to you got to change the laws and and you know make the penalty harsher. But I don't know why we why we coddle to this kind of behavior. 
And then why do we let them out early? Well, we're not. It's not so much that we're coddling. It's that the law prevents them from. Uh, I mean, there are guidelines for sentencing for every right. for every crime, and every judge has to determine how that crime fits with those guidelines. And these are oftentimes what you get. Uh, Holyoke and State Police arrested more than fifty people Wednesday as part of an operation to combat violence and drug dealing in the city. Holyoke police say a total of 51 people were arrested as part of Operation Holyoke Safe Streets, a zero-tolerance program to prevent violent crime, drug dealing, and other offenses. Holyoke Police uh, Detective Hamill shared the uh, results. 51 uh, arrests processed at Holyoke Police Department and the Mass State Police Barracks. Charges included, you ready? Outstanding warrants, firearm-related charges, narcotics trafficking, narcotics distribution, Narcotics possession. I feel, I feel like I'm Sally Struthers reading all the subjects lines that go along with that DeVry Institute. <laughs> Reckless endangerment of a child. Stolen motor vehicle. Assault and battery on a police officer. Mechanical engineering. Yes. Interior design. Medical billing. Yeah. <laughs> 285. HVHC. 285 motor vehicle stops. 130 motor vehicle citations. 126 motor vehicle verbal warnings. 29 criminal summons, 57 property checks, 53 street stops, illegal and uh, firearm and ammunition ammunition recovered, and 71 outreach attempts completed by the Holyoke PD and the uh, CHD staff regarding services for crisis intervention. Damn, them cops are busy up yeah, there. They're uh, they're loading up. Is that like uh, you know you do a whole day like that on the police force and you're like, okay boys, we'll see you next year. No work until then. <laughs> uh, 22 News received uh, several tips of incidents involving state police through Holyoke on Wednesday. A 22 News crew saw state police on Holyoke Street around 12.30 p.m. with a canine unit after a vehicle was towed away. Oh, they had the dog out there? It was barking. It was like, row, 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 row. I bet you they found some drugs. You ever see those drugs with the drugs? Yeah. Where they throw the thing and it smells like cocaine and the dog oh, yeah. goes after it? Hey, how, did co- how does a dog ever never get addicted to cocaine? How does that never happen? Good question. I don't have an answer. You ever see a dog hyped up on cocaine? He's snorting a lot. He says, man, and stuff. It's crazy. <laughs> State police showed a, shared a photo of one arrest where a firearm, knife, drugs, ca- and cash were seized. State and Holyoke police were conducting the operation all through Wednesday, along with members of the Department of Justice, the Hamden County Sheriff's Department, Hamden County District Attorney's Office, the FBI, GTF, DEA, ATF, and HSI. I'm sorry. Could you say that again? Uh, yes. The state police shared one. You want me to read the whole thing? <laughs> I'm just or trying just, to I want to write just, this down. Or just the acronyms. The FBI, Western Mass, GTF, DEA, ATF, and HSI. Okay. What, about, what about the BEC and the DED? And They'll the get to that to you ASAP. What about the HSA? That's a good question. What about the HOA? I don't even know. Yeah. Well, how come they don't bring a homeowners association into one of these things? Homeowners is what? What? Oh, oh I gotcha. man, you got me. <laughs> I got you. How come they don't bring a home? How come you never hear like, ah, oh, the uh, state police was joined by the FBI, the uh, SPD, and uh, the HOA? Well, what does the HOA do? Well, they're going around telling everybody they can't. <laughs> it's they're like those are like the best police officers. Oh yeah, you want hey. to talk about like or, you know ordinance uh, you know issues? Yeah, HOA be right on top of it. You're walking through Holyoke and you're like, hey, hey. Needle day is Wednesday. The needles don't come out on the curb until Wednesday. We already talked about this. I'm sorry, but needles do not go into regular trash. They go into recycling. Oh, oh, you're putting your you're you're putting you're putting your sprinklers on before 7 a.m. Well, I'm gonna have to write you a citation. You know, I know this crack house has got loads of people, but is there not one person that can cut their lawn on a weekly basis that's yeah. grown a little bit longer than it needs to be, according to our uh, our rules? Yes. This house, this crack house is not up to date. The, the weeds are only one foot high. The requirements clearly call for them to be at least seven feet high in front of the house. These installed windows are going to have to be redone. Yeah. They don't fit in line with our historical society. Yes, the trash bag tint on your windows or your house will not fly with this HOA. <laughs> <laughs> Well, 
Well, now we know homeowners <clears throat> associations are kind of they, they're like little uh, little governments. The little homeowners association. Oh, it's a kangaroo court. I I am so lucky. This is one of the reasons why I live out in the middle of nowhere because I don't have to deal with things like this. Yeah. You know, I understand that HOAs are like taking help keep a neighborhood clean and not blighted and people sure. having junk all over their yard and all that stuff. But they can also be a little too much. I, I my, my my mother had her house down in down in Florida. They they it was there was all these crazy kind of like stupid little ordinances and stuff. One of them was the the sprinkler she, my mother forgot to set the time change when yeah. the time change, the, the hour ahead or whatever it was, the water's not supposed to come on after 8 o'clock in the morning. It's like one of these rules that they have down there. All right. But it did come on one day uh, after 8 o'clock because she didn't set the t- It was the day the time changed. They Ow. gave her a $25 fine for having the water on after 8 o'clock. And she, they wouldn't appeal it. Like she tried to appeal it, and they said, "No, you're paying twenty five dollars. You know, you should have known." Oh my god! That you, yeah, it's it's, it's like a, it's like it's like a bad hall monitor. Well, you know, at some point, you know, I, I'm sure we're gonna you know sell our house and and go condo. Yeah, you know, just you know the maintenance issues and all that other stuff. I mean, at some point we may do that. But I've heard some you know you know some situations where. All right, you're living in a condo, and the association tells you uh, we don't want any pickup trucks in the driveway. That's we don't want to be seen. Now, yeah. think about the reality of this. Let's say that you buy a big pickup truck. Mm-hmm. What's that going to cost you? Uh, I don't know, sixty, seventy thousand dollars at least. Yeah, a brand new one, yeah. about the same price as maybe a low model BMW. Yeah, yeah. So really. <laughs> If I'm part of a of a, a homeowners uh, y- y- association, I might be more upset by say uh, a car that's valued at less than thirty thousand dollars. Yeah, than I would be of a truck that's going to cost somebody eighty to ninety thousand because it's all jacked with the with with uh, with options. Yeah, right. Makes no sense to me. I'd I'd much rather see a guy in a pickup truck I, that, than than you know some. Uh, some you know like a like an old beat up station wagon that that was another uh violation uh my brother had gone there down there to visit my mom and he's got a pickup truck you're not allowed to have pickup trucks in the driveway now it said commercial vehicles right no right. commercial pickup trucks in the driveway well, every truck registered in New York State has commercial written on it. Of course. So then, of course, they gave him a fine for having the, well, they gave my mother a fine for having a pickup truck in the driveway. These people are out of their minds. And nobody wants to pay extra money to have your brother visit them. No, no, not my brother anyway. Right. You know, I wouldn't pay, I wouldn't, I'd pay him to stay away from the house. <laughs> Your uh, Pioneer Valley forecast today, it is going to be sunny with a high of 63. Tomorrow, rainy with a high of 60. It's 42 right now in downtown Springfield. I'm Steve Dangle, and that's the news on Rock 102. Ah, yeah. Rock 102, Springfield's Classic Rock at 650. And Alice Cooper with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. It is going to be uh, sunny today with a high of 63. Tomorrow, uh, rainy with a high of 60. It's 42 right now in downtown Springfield. I'm hearing a lot of people say, hey, you know what? I want to go to that Mayflower Marathon comedy night, but uh, you know how many tickets are there left? I don't really know. I can tell you it is a limited amount that are available to people, and all the money that is raised that night goes to the open pantry for the Mayflower Marathon. A great night of laughs with Marty Caproni, special guest Brian Plum and Katie Arroyo, plus the two of us as your host. All tickets profits are going to the Mayflower Marathon, and they're on sale right now at rock102.com. Again, seating is limited, so you want to get your tickets right away. It's Mayflower Marathon Comedy Night brought to you by Dave Miner Exterior Home Improvements, Aqua Pump, and Rock 102 Springfield's Classic Rock. Wait, what? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just... Uh... Acknowledging all my birthday messages. On, oh uh, yeah, on social it's, uh, media. Yeah, that's the thing about uh, birthdays on uh, on the socials. Oh, you got uh, I got the uh, like five thousand friends and like another thousand followers, mm. and they're all wishing you a happy birthday. And uh, it's nice. It's nice to hear from people that uh, you'll never hear from again until next year. And you feel I don't know if you feel this way. I feel as if I don't at least acknowledge their effort with a like. Yeah. 
then it feels like I'm ungrateful. Yeah, you can't keep up with that, though. You can't. There's, uh, You're going at, like, uh, you know, five birthday uh, wishes per minute. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I, it's listen. It's impo- It's impossible to keep up with it. Last month, it took me like four days to get through all of them. You know what you got to do? You want me to acknowledge it? You got to make it stand out. Say something ridiculous. Yeah. So say of course. something absolutely ridiculous. Maybe vulgar. Maybe uh, offensive. Say it. Go yeah. ahead and do that. I give you permission to do. Like, hey, happy birthday! By the way, I haven't listened to your show in over two years. Like that's right, like that right. stands out. That's like. Everyone's going to be nice to me, but the one guy who's being a douchebag, that's the one I'm going to remember all, all year long. That's that's right. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking uh, I'm looking forward to going to the uh, Taylor Swift concert tonight. What a way to celebrate, man. Right at the a- movie theater. Hey, yeah, listen, it saves me all this money from not having to buy Taylor Swift actual tickets. Now, uh, are you are you doing a, like a big thing, like a, like a dinner in the show, or just, mm-hmm. just the show? Uh, I don't think we have time for that, the dinner in the show. What time's the film? It's at six, but we get stuff going on until like oh, five yeah. o'clock, and then you know we can't. Uh, there's not. There's no way you're gonna make it there on time. We're we're going uh, like at a, at a matinee time, mm-hmm. and uh, and that's good. So when the movie ends after like what a f- almost four hours, uh, you know we'll be starving. So you will know, we'll probably grab something to eat, and and then go home, and then like live the rest of our lives like none of this had ever happened. That's my plan, at least. You're going to this. We yeah no I, we're going we're going two adults going to the show well I'm taking my kids I know you're taking your kids yeah. but uh, listen uh, there's a lot of Taylor Swift played uh, in the Baxendale house uh, yeah I bet there is you damn right there is what are you twelve dude uh, this is this is this is more than just a a, a young woman that <laughs> appeals to a, a younger demographic. This is a woman with a with a timeless amount of ta- uh, talent. This, this is this is a young lady who pisses off boomers about being in the football on the football field watching her boyfriend from the sidelines. Well, maybe that's some yeah. people. I'm not one of them. I'm one of the people that believes that uh, it's the football that's getting in the way of this relationship. I actually think that's true too. <laughs> Look, if this were the off season, they could be together all the time. Yeah, did I, I did I I played that uh, thing for you. It was an AI version of what Taylor's next breakup song was going to be like. <laughs> and she's like, I kissed you at the 40, and then I had you at the 30. It was like it was like this whole <laughs> thing about a football player, and I, if, if I can find it, I'll, I'll uh, throw it on for you a little bit later. Uh, there's another comedy show tonight at uh, the Roar Comedy Club. Brianna Woodward will be a part of uh, New England's Funniest Comics. Uh, it's a whole show of a bunch of other people. She'll be there. We'll be talking to her in just a couple minutes. It's about 6.55 with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. And now, Bax's View from the Couch. Brought to you by Rocky's Ace Hardware. Outdoor Power Headquarters. Steel, Craftsman, Aaron's, plus battery-powered Ego. Hey, good morning, sports fans. How the heck are you? Well, there you have it. The Major League Baseball Championship Series, all set to begin. Sure, it might have been nice to have a team that I care about make it so far into the postseason, but that's not the case. Instead, you'll have Houston taking on the Texas Rangers in the ALCS, and in the National League, you'll have Philadelphia against the Arizona Diamondbacks. Sound exciting? Not really. Why? Perhaps it has something to do with the fact that the four teams that remain, only one of them was a divisional champion, the Houston Astros. The others weren't even the number one seed. You see, what you have here is a playoff format that nobody particularly cares for, even though it's largely the same system used by nearly every other sport in America. But because it's baseball, and this is the only second of the year that they've used this format, there are some people who are losing their minds that three of the best teams in baseball have been eliminated, including Baltimore, the Dodgers, and the Atlanta Braves. The reason why the format has everybody steamed is the five days that it took to end the regular season to get through the wild card round until you finally get into the divisional series. Yesterday, after feeling dozens of complaints, Commissioner Rob Manfred asked people to be patient, saying, it's only year two. I'm of the view that you need to give something a chance to work out. Well, that's certainly a satisfying answer, especially when you're the Orioles, Dodgers, or Braves, who all won over 100 games this season. The average number of wins between Houston, Philadelphia, Texas, and Arizona was about 11 and a half games less. Less. Is this the system that uh, you think is fair? Does it unfairly benefit the lower-seeded teams or the ones that didn't have to wait around for almost a full week to play? I think that depends on who you are. 
If you're fifth, the fifth seeded Texas Rangers or the sixth seeded Diamondbacks, this format is freaking fantastic. But if you're not and your dominating first place team just got bounced out by a team that you've already beaten nine to ten times during the regular season, then this season this system sucks and the results are a farcical outrage. I'm just glad that it's them and not any of us who have to deal with this sort of soul-crushing devastation. Suddenly finishing in last place in the division doesn't seem so bad after all. But hey, enough of my yappin' sports brought to you by Rocky's Ace Hardware. I'm looking at the Ego Battery Power Leaf Blower, now $2.99 at Rocky's with your Ace Rewards card. I'm looking at the Rocky's website, but you can look at the Rocky's app or pick up the flyer in the store. What's on sale? It's always at your fingertips at Rocky's Ace Hardware. I'm back. That's my view from the couch. Rock 102. <laughs> Rock 102, Springfield's Classic Rock. <laughs> Those kids are going somewhere. They are going somewhere. They really are. They? Yeah. Anyway, it's uh, <laughs> 709 with Bax and Nagel and Rock 102. I'm sorry. That was just funny. It was funny. My kid uh, sent me a happy birthday using an emoji that uh, typically people wouldn't use. No. Like but to, to wish you a happy birthday, but uh, good for her. You you have to <laughs> applaud her creativity. I do applaud the yeah, creativity. How do you, how do you yeah, not? Yeah. How do yeah. you not? Uh, let's see. We got uh, the keyword of cash coming up. We got open line Friday uh, next hour. But right now, there's a great comedy show coming to the Roar Comedy Club at MGM Springfield tonight. Uh, New England's funniest comics uh, starting at eight o'clock. Among those performing tonight is uh, comedian Brianna Woodward. She is uh, from Massachusetts, and uh, she's on the phone list right now. Good morning, Brianna. How are you? How are you guys? <laughs> we're, we're doing great. We, listen, we know nothing about you because it doesn't seem like you have very much of a digital footprint yeah. to follow. And the and the uh, and the, the the Roar Comedy Club website just says America's funniest comics. I mean, is, is there is there a list somewhere? Is it like a fantasy league? Oh, I, I how do they figure that out? I mean, if it's like a fantasy league, I'm pretty sure it's just because I got broad shoulders, so I'm just out here shoulder checking them. That's how they booked me. Uh, all right, you got broad shoulders. We know a little bit about yeah, okay, you. Okay, all right, okay. You're, there, you're sturdy. You're sturdily uh, built. Yeah. So, very, very sturdy. Uh, no, I don't know. They, I, I don't know. I'm pretty sure it's just a list. They just booked us. They're like, hey, come scream at this MGM place. And I'm like, I can do that. Uh, and then Eric was like, hey, you want to do a radio interview? And I'm like, sure. And he's like, just call this number, and I'm like, I have never done this. Yeah, I you, will do that. Oh well, so, so you've never done this, and we've never talked to anybody. We have no information <laughs> about. So I think we're on the right track. Here. Actually, we have done that before, and it, it sometimes works out okay. But but you're what we do know uh, of you, uh, Brianna, is that uh, you're originally from the, the central part of the states, Worcester, I suppose. Uh, I do a lot of stuff in Worcester, but I live in Lunenburg. 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 Is that in Massachusetts? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, you know, Fitchburg State. It's the city, or not even the city, the town next to it. I, so uh. that's so that's where Fitchburg people go to get away from it all, is Lunenburg. Pretty much. We have a single park. <laughs> like, maybe. People just drive through us to get to uh, Boston. Oh, so it's like a, it's a stopover. When you when you yeah. you want to hit the Cumberland yeah. Farms in town and you want to get yourself a coffee before you head back right. to Boston right? now, so uh, we don't even have a Cumbie. <laughs> what? There's a town in Massachusetts without one. Yeah, we have to either go to Lemonster or uh, Ayer. Ooh, oh, God. Oh, God. Who would yeah, want to go there? That's that's like saying I, I need to go to Lawrence for something because it's the only place <laughs> to get it. No oh, thanks. Yeah, gross. I so, would rather die. So <laughs> where where do you live now, though? Lunenburg. It is Lunenburg. Oh, you okay. live in Lunenburg. All right. Yeah. All right. So now we've established that. You're Lunenburg. <laughs> you got broad shoulders. And a, and a, and a low center of gravity. Yeah. Uh, again, all assumption. Uh, but uh, but so what's the what's the comedy uh, scene like in Lunenburg? Uh, just me. Just, just you. Wow. Bird. Being a freak show, keeping the taxes down. Hey, um, hey! Listen, stop, you'll be you'll be doing on. you'll be doing uh, Roar at MGM, and then on Tuesday you'll be doing the park right there in Lunenburg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me and like the one homeless person they bust in to just keep it spicy. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so, uh, so, but you're but you're coming to Roar on uh, on on Friday, and uh, do, yeah. you, do who else is on that on the on that bill? Uh, Maraid Connolly will be there, and I know that because I'm giving her a ride. She's from Worcester. <laughs> okay, uh, so Maraid will be there. And then, uh, who else? What's that other broad? Uh, Sherilyn will be there. 
she's my also my friend. <laughs> that broad, Sherilyn, my dear friend. <laughs> that broad. All right. Now, is she also is she also carpooling with you, or is she taking her own? Is she taking a bus? No, nah, she'll be she'll be taking her own probably private flight. You know, oh, helicopter yeah. her in. And so, then um, Dave Caggiano, and then like two other dudes. One of them wow. I don't really know. So, uh, growing up in, in in Central Mass, I I I would be remiss if I didn't ask you this, uh, Brianna. Uh, yeah. Have you ever been west of Worcester before? Oh yeah, you have. Uh, it, let, let me put it. Let, let me reframe re- reframe the question. Was it voluntary? Unfortunately. <laughs> well, yeah. see, that's what that's what I was getting at. Where Where did you go? Uh, you know, Springfield, Northampton, um, just like all the other states and whatnot. I see. Because <laughs> a lot of yeah, Western Mass. Because I mean, a lot of people that that grew up you know east of of Worcester, myself included, you never really went to Western Massachusetts unless it was absolutely necessary. Like you're on your way to Sturbridge, or you know, your parents want to take you to Tanglewood, or you know, something like that. Usually, <laughs> the it's the transition period to get to the the, the state border. <laughs> yeah, that's very fair. <laughs> All right, now now let's ask the real question: What traumas have you suffered in your life that you wanted to become a stand up comedian? <laughs> Oh boy, I was, I was like, can I swear? Like, what can I talk about? I was like, how radio is this radio well, uh, show? There's you, a lot P- of traumas happening. P- PG thirteen on the language, but uh, you you can elaborate on some sort of traumas. We, we're yeah. we're like therapists here. We like to try. Listen, to we we we, we, th- we we eat traumas for dinner. That's how much yeah. uh, we love a good trauma. Oh, me too, and that's why I look the way I look. But uh, <laughs> I eat all my traumas. No, uh, let's see. My uh, parents, you know. Uh, drug addicts, dads, and alcoholics, uh, bullied a lot as a kid. Let's see. Pretty much, if anything bad could happen to you, it did. <laughs> all the things that make for great laughs. You know, after saying all that, I don't <laughs> doubt you are one of, in fact, the funniest <laughs> comedians around to be on a show like that. Yeah, it's just like, uh, oh, I can't think. They're like PG 13. There's just so many fun things. All I guess. You would just have to. Well, come you know, go, we're recording this Friday. anyway. Go, go ahead and tell us a good trauma, and we'll uh, we'll see if we can air it tomorrow. <laughs> I'll cut it up today. Oh, perfect. Um, I don't know. Ah, there, you know, one of those things where they're like, like, what's your favorite band? But you listen to a little bit of everything. It's kind of like a question like that, where it's like, what's your favorite trauma? I'm like, well, do you want it from like when I was like a single digit age? You want a teenage trauma? I'm like, what? there's different flavor profiles of trauma. <laughs> Well, well, listen, Brianna, being a comedian and also suffering through uh, trauma from an alcoholic father, my dad peed in the dishwasher once. (laughs) What did your dad do? Oh, your dad peed in the dishwasher? My dad did almost murder me because I accidentally put Dawn soap in the dishwasher. Oh! Oh, Seems like it would be whimsical, but to him, he's like, well, time to skewer your eyeballs with my thumb. And I'm like, sweet, dude, that can rule. Oh, oh all right. Well, there <laughs> you go. Listen, there it's you all go. fine. Yeah. It's all good. It's all good. That's But those are the kinds of stories that warm the hearts of the people that spent good money to and, see you and, on stage. And, and they give you such a different perspective on life that nobody else has. Oh, yeah. yeah there's that, there's a, my dad was, like, arrested a lot, so I have some good... Uh, oh, some good jail stories. Oh, and stuff sweet! About, I, 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 yeah. I wish my dad was arrested, but that never happened. <laughs> I know. Well, not for the stuff he should have been, but you know, right. there's only so many DUIs that you can get away with. Oh, hey, <laughs> hey you, you know, know what? what? I'm starting to see the building blocks of a great comedy career here. Uh, listen, Brianna, <laughs> I lived with a uh, with an alcoholic for 23 years, and not once did that man get arrested for DWI, which he should have. But he didn't. So I think he's one of the a, lucky ones. That's a lucky success rate. Wow, there yeah. you go. That's a pretty good success rate. My dad, you know, multiple trucks, you know, flipping stuff, falling over, just like he only got pinged, I think, for like nine of them or whatever, but <laughs> nine. <it's okay>. Nine. <laughs> like nine. like like the first seven weren't good enough to get to like a professional level. <laughs> Oh, uh, no, I was there for a couple of them. Yeah. He uh oh, here's a good story, I guess. Okay. He uh he was arrested one time and they already had him in the back of the car he was all cuffed and put away and uh i was there because it was back in the day when you could bring your kids to the bar and uh i was so i was just chilling you can I still do like, that by oh. <laughs> well they still do that but yeah. it's breweries now and it's well cute, it's dollaritas but... at applebee's but yes you can still do it <laughs> thank you but uh so yeah so we're on our way home and uh and then all of a sudden he was not on his way home and the cop like 
for some reason, I don't know why, but he like pulled me out super hard of the car, like grabbed me by my arm and just like ripped me out of the back seat. Like I was in there funneling the drinks into my dad, like <laughs> my fault. And <laughs> I was like, what I do? And uh, my dad saw this and he, uh, he kicked out the back windshield of the cop car, shimmied out and like while cuffed, like headbutted the cop with like, don't touch my kid. <laughs> That's a good story. That's a good story. You know what? As much as the as much as the man may have had problems, he was sticking up for his little girl. Yeah, he's like, if anyone's gonna head butter, it's me. So don't you dare step on my toes. Yeah, that's see, that's yeah. Only I can induce violence on my own children. Right. <laughs> if he's gonna get CTE. It's gonna be homegrown. <laughs> that's awesome. Bri- Brianna Woodward is going to be at uh, Roar Comedy Club uh, tonight, 8 o'clock uh, Friday night. It's going to be a great show. Brianna, great to talk to you, and, and we wish you a, a great weekend. Awesome. You guys, too. Thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks you so bet. much for coming on. Brianna Woodward with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. Rock 102, Springfield's Classic Rock at 725 in Steppenwolf with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. It's uh, going to be sunny today with a high of 63. Tomorrow, rainy with a high of 60. It is uh, 42 right now in downtown Springfield. Uh, Steve in the Rock uh, uh, from Rock 102, that's you. Who's uh, that? Who? You're going to be doing a Halloween celebration at the Rumble Seat Bar and Grill in Chicopee, Saturday, October 28th. How about <clears throat> that? Yeah, how about that? I used to do that for years until it was taken away from me. Yes, well, uh, some people are better than others at their jobs. <laughs> you can uh, stalk the night away from 9 to 11 at the Rumble Seat, uh, hosting a costume contest with prizes for the sexiest, best couple or group, funniest, most original, scariest, a $250 cash prize for the best overall costume. Come in, con- uh, in costume, no cover, no questions. The Halloween celebration, Saturday, October 28th at the Rumble Seat in uh, Springfield Street in Chickabee with Steve and Rock 102, Springfield's Classic Rock. You know, uh, real quick, we uh, we read the, uh, <clears throat> you know, they give us scripts to read for, like, uh, commercials and yeah. stuff. So I did the commercial for that yesterday, and uh, it said sexy and sluttiest. And I was like, all right. Does yeah. it say sluttiest in the liner? It, it does not. Hmm. That's weird. I wonder if we can say that or not during our commercial. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, I didn't feel real comfortable when I had to say sluttiest either, so I just said sexiest. I I and skipped it. Hey, listen, but I said it slower so it filled up the time. We're all about the sluttiness, sluttiest. You, <laughs> listen, all you sluts from all over the yeah, place should come out to the Rumble seat. That's, uh, that's the place to be that night. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm. I'm. <laughs> I'm interested in seeing the sluts. <laughs> Hello, I'm Steve Nagel from Rock 102. What kind of sluts do you have here? Where's the sluts? You know what? We're going to change the contest around, and we're going to give the grand prize to the sluttiest girl in here. And Forget about grand, the most creative costume. And that grand prize is is a night with Steve Nagel. Yeah, and that guy that guy who spent uh, 27 hours putting that costume together, he gets the $100. <laughs> you get the big prize. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Hey, uh, uh, just uh, going through my social media, and uh, listen, I'm not going to be able to catch up by and thanking everybody for the happy birthday, so I'll just do a, you know what I'll do? What? I'll go on tomorrow and go, thanks everybody for the happy birthday wishes, so then everybody has to wish you happy birthday again on that post. Yeah, because you need the belated ba- birthdays yeah. too. Uh, but t- uh, but today I, I got one, uh, I got one from you. Well, Steve, uh, you mm. know, I didn't want to be left out, and I felt the... Uh, that birthday wishes were appropriate, and I'm uh, I'm usually the HBD guy, and now thanks to Facebook's little like pre-written birthday messages, oh, yeah. I don't even have to do that anymore. It makes it sound like I'm being genuine by saying happy birthday when you're not being genuine at no, all. No, I'm not being genuine at all. So I want to give you something a little bit a little bit better than that. I want right. to give you something that was like from the heart. Right. So this is uh, this is from Bax, dear Steve. Since today is your birthday, and access to your own Facebook page will be limited at best. I thought I would offer some thoughts as you are bound headlong into your mid-40s. It's times like these when a man such as yourself begins to ruminate about the direction of their lives. We often wonder whether we have taken the right direction in life. Have we fulfilled all of our ambitions? Have we failed at living up to our own expectations? Or have we simply chosen to live a life with resignation and regret? (laughs) The age of personal self-reflection begins today, Steve. Oh, sure, there will be cause for celebration, a cake perchance. Gifts may be exchanged, but ultimately today is a day of wonder. Like, I wonder what might have become of my life only if I had things like aspirations or dreams. 
Or has my lack of success or recognition been forever stained by my questionable choices in life? How is a man to answer these questions? Perhaps you're too close to make such a sweeping inventory of your largely uninspired life choices. Or perhaps you've chosen to embrace the empty validation of denial. Whatever the case may be, please enjoy your birthday. There are very few of us who will enjoy it for you. So seize the day, my friend. May you hoist your glass and prepare yourself for whatever time that you have left. Cheers! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> happy birthday, well, buddy. Well, that was a very nice... Uh, that was a very nice... No one else has offered you those kinds of thoughts. Uh, no, I think Chris Kellogg wrote that to me this morning. How do, you, his, how do you celebrate your birthday? Wrote, what's your craziest cake story? What's your craziest cake story? <laughs> who's got Who's got it? Who's got a good story? Hey, do you want to go on part of that uh, fake phone call thing that we run every day? It's controversy, but it's made up. But yeah. you don't know that until someone lifts the curtain yeah. and you can see the wizard for what he really is. You know what? I'll uh, I'll blow the curtain off all that stuff. That thing is fake. That little phone call thing that they do over there, right? And then this the the one down in the Hartford station, they do that War of the Roses. Yeah, that's fake too. Fake, 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 fake. fake. It's a service that people call up uh, that they use that that they use actors. Yes, to create controversy to make you think that that's a real situation. It is a service they use yeah. to do a disservice to your intelligence. Yeah, and you know what? We used to cut out the middleman. Mark from West Springfield was right here in the room next door to us. <laughs> He's in the building. And who do you remember more? <laughs> Mark from West Mark Springfield. Mark from West Springfield. Not the War of the Roses, douche. We got news next to Rock 102. Here's your Western Mass News first. 734 with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. It's time for news brought to you by Gary Rum Hyundai. Technicians get up to a $5,000 sign-on bonus right now. Learn more at GaryRumHyundai.com slash family. There's local radio icon Steve Nagel. All right, well, thanks, Bax. Uh, listen, I'm sure there's other news going on this morning, but the big news this morning is East Heaven Hot Tubs is going to be reopening in East Hampton. All right, there How we about go. that? Yeah. Yeah. yeah! Let's go for a soak. You, me, Marty, we'll go for a we'll go for a a, a soak. Rub a dub dub. Yeah. Three fat dudes in a truck uh, in a tub. Uh. Following a June 21 fire, 2021 fire at their Northampton location, East Heaven Hot Tubs and Spas reopening in East Hampton. Now, I swear, for the life of me, when I first moved here and I would see the ad for that and the advocate, yeah, for years I thought it was East Haven Hot Hot Tubs. Was that like one of those, uh, what do they call that, the... Uh, the Mandela effect. But I always kind remember of. it being East Haven hot tubs. But then uh, when it was pointed out to me, I don't know, probably 10 years ago that it was East Heaven, I go, well, that makes a lot more sense than East Haven because where the hell is East Haven? You're, you're between uh, you're in Northampton, East Hampton, uh, whatever. I believe it's a little bit uh, south of uh, North Haven. Uh, okay. All right. I, I, I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but but yeah, I always thought it was East Haven, but it's really East Heaven. Yeah, no, uh, no, you're right. It's uh, it's one of those things where no one really knows the true answer, and when you think you know, you don't really know. Uh, Logan Shapiro, I think I have a gift certificate for one of these. Ooh, I wonder if it's still applicable. Well, it might be. It was supposed. To, I think it was given to me around 2019. I don't. I think. Yeah, it was somebody gave it to me. It was yeah. in 2019, and then, uh, then of course the pandemic hit shortly yeah, yeah, after, and then people weren't going. Uh, the well loved business opened in December of 1981, and their former uh, Northampton location is now home to Many Graces Farm and Design. You remember where it used to be? It's right across from Smith College on yeah. that uh, that side street there. Yeah, and then uh, and now it's it's down on Route Five between East Ham. It is in East Hampton, but it's right on the Northampton border. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll have to. Uh, I'll have to figure that out. Well, it's nice to see a small business come bouncing back like that. I mean, uh, you know, that's got to suck for not having a place for the last two years. You know, there's a bunch of people who've been uh, in Northampton for the last couple of years. You know, just looking to get a take a good dip in a hot tub, and they've been unable to do so. I uh, I got my own. I I like mine. You know why? Because you don't have to share it with anybody else, like, yeah, I know. like the public. You know what I mean? Uh, not to say that this place is bad. Supposedly, this place was, like, really clean. Like, they really do Oh yeah. Uh, do a good job, uh, you know, keeping it clean. 
But you ever go to like a like a resort and you you know, like see a hot tub and people are sitting in there. Yeah, and the water and, is gray because and, all the oils and dead skin on their nasty yeah. little bodies but, is floating around in there. But usually when you're at a resort, people are drinking and they're sitting there and they're not getting out of the hot tub. You know what that means. They're peeing in the hot tub. Yeah, that's disgusting. Yeah, it is. It's, yeah. It, and, you know, it, it's it's fine if you do it. Yes, but if you're in a hot tub, okay. yeah, it, but right. Yeah. But if you're in a hot tub with like 15, 16 people, yeah, and they're all doing it, then you're basically it's, then you're basically like a steeping like a tea no, bag. It's not okay if you do that. That causes that 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 makes the water. I guess maybe if you were the sole user of it, and that's what you wanted to do. Yes, that's that's it. I again, I don't mind doing it myself. I could take responsibility for my own uh, my own bladder when, issues. When, but when you got a whole tub full of people, and they're all doing it, you know what do you think is going on down there? I I don't know what's going on down there. A uh, construction worker was struck and killed in a work zone by an elderly driver Thursday morning, according to Pittsfield Police Lieutenant uh, Mark Madalena. Around 7.52 a.m., uh, police, fire, and EMTs were called to the uh, area of West Street for a report of a motor vehicle that struck a pedestrian. That portion of the road was under construction at the time. Madalena said that 87-year-old Edward LaCour of Pittsfield was driving a 2015 uh, Chevy Colorado on West uh, Street when he approached a construction zone, the eastbound side was closed, and Lancor was directed by a flagger into the westbound side when he struck a worker in the roadway. Ooh. The uh, construction worker, uh, 49-year-old Shane Casavan of Lanesboro, was taken to Berkshire Medical Center where he died due to his injuries. Oh, what a horrible. horrible story. You know, I always uh, wonder that, <clears throat> like... People get so frustrated because you have to wait for, like, a construction zone. Right. You know, uh, especially if you're on, like, a just a two-lane road and there's a cop there that has to direct you through. Yeah. Sometimes you go through, like, the machine and the cop. Like, actually, that's a great band name, by. Ooh, uh, Machine and the, the Cop. Machine and the Cop. I like that. Uh, but it's a, uh, you got to go through the little lane there. You come pretty damn close sometimes to the that machinery. You know, I... I'm always I'm always wondering why they do that when the thing is in motion, like the like when they're using one of them back hose. Oh yeah, it back hose. Look, Look at the, the front, front hose. hose. You ain't gonna get none, none of it. it. Uh, but uh, the back <laughs> the back hose moving back and forth yeah. it comes like really close to the lane of traffic that you're in. And then you know the cops standing there, and he's uh he's just standing. Waving his arm. Yeah, you gotta you, you gotta pay attention to where your car is at in situations like that. Like you you look at your look at your your front right panel. You know, how close am I gonna get to something? You know what? Speaking of cars, uh, you want to know it's something that really grinds my gears. No, what? Air machines at like gas stations. This is these are the biggest ripoffs I have ever seen in my life. Mm-hmm. I went to the uh, the Atlantis station down here in East Longmeadow the other day. It was supposed to be a Cumberland Farms. You know which one I'm talking about? I do. By the American Saw place across right? the street from the Fiorentina. Right, right, right across the street there. Nice gas station. You know, decent place. Right. Uh, so, but I uh, needed some air in my tire because I look at the uh, dashboard and the dashboard's showing that little. Pac-Man ghost that's been stabbed <clears throat> by something. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, it's the ti- It's supposed to be like a deflated tire, but it looks like a, yeah. like a Pac-Man ghost, like an orange Pac-Man ghost with a with a knife right down the middle of it. Right. That's how Pac-Man finally won. By the way, I had no idea. He stabbed the ghost. Really? Yeah. You learn something new every day. You do. Anyway, uh, so the thing says, "Oh, it's a dollar," but it doesn't say you how long it's going to be. You know, and how many people really have quarters anymore? Luckily enough, I had like three dollars and quarters in my in my car, but a lot of people don't really carry a lot of quarters with them anymore. With tollless, you know. Uh, sure. Right. Uh, whatever. And uh, so I uh, I go uh, and I put the dollar in, and the machine doesn't start up. But I really need air because one of the tires is low on air. Okay. But I think they're all kind of low on air. That's why I was just doing this whole. Okay, well, let's do the maintenance check on this now and make sure they're all up to thirty six psi. Right. That's pounds per square inch. If you didn't know. No, that. I knew that tire yes. talk. Right. Um. But uh, so I I put the dollar in, and uh, nothing happens. The machine doesn't even turn on. Well, what's going on with that? I don't know. So I put two more quarters in like an idiot because. 
I guess that'll work. And it yeah. did. The machine turned on. I'm like, oh, great. But the instructions on the machine said, hey, make sure you take all the caps off your tires before you even start doing this because you're only limited to a certain amount of time and you're not going to have time to fill up all your tires. And I'm like, what? Really? Yeah. So as I, so I put the I put I take the thing off and I put the put the nozzle on on the tire that the one that probably needs it the most, right? And uh, the thing is going so slow. Yeah. It's like cuz you set the PSI to what it be and then it just kind of increments in mm-hmm. the air psh, psh, psh. But it's taking forever. Yeah. So by the time I'm done with one tire, that's it. There's no more air. You can't go to the other tires because you ran out of time. What a rip. It is a rip off. So then I I uh I put another dollar 50 in the machine. Oh my god. And it doesn't turn on. What are they doing over there? I don't know. And you know what? I did this I'm leaving because I I don't want to deal yeah. with this anymore. I don't I like I probably could have gotten back inside and gotten $3 back from the clerk. Right. But to, that's that's inconvenient. Do you it's not a convenient store. Do you remember the olden days when uh, air was free? Was free? Yes. That doesn't exist anymore. I was at one uh, not that long ago, where yeah, you know, my my tires are starting to to lose a little bit of air, and I went to a gas station. I'm not going to say where or who owns it, but I think they understand what they're doing there, and they had a machine that didn't take coins. And I'm thinking, what is this? It had like the the uh, like the chip reader for your for your credit card. Yeah, I mean, yeah. who's using a credit card to yeah. fill the air in their tires? So I do it right, like yeah. an idiot, like yeah. a, like a stupid yeah, yeah. moron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I put my credit card begrudgingly into the into the machine. I pull it out, put it back in my pocket. The air starts. Then I look to my left. And there's an air machine that takes coins, like literally right next to it. Had I just moved my head like two inches, I would have yeah. seen it. And I'm like, I'm stupid. And the only advantage to the credit card machine is that you could set the PSI you wanted, and it would go up until the, yeah. the tire was filled to that point. I'm listen, like, this is stupid. Listen, you be getting air for free. This is this is what I want. Uh, this is what I want for my birthday. I want people to call in during open lines and tell me where you can find free air somewhere where I can put fill my tires. Hmm. Without having to fumble for a credit card or worry if my yeah. quarters are going to make the machine start. There you go. You know, I would have thought that what you would really want for your birthday was a big booty hoe. I guess I was wrong. Because that's what I got you. Can I still get that? Well, not now. Why? You're, oh, why? You return the big real- booty hoe? Now that I realize it's not what you want. <laughs> you get you return the big booty hoe. <laughs> and now you get, yeah. Re- return the big uh, booty what hoe. What am I going to do with this big booty hoe now? I got this whole, uh, this whole gift. This, Can she uh, the- pump air in your tires? I bet you she could. She, you know what? She can do something that makes it look like air is being blown into a tire. It takes very a lot of talent. That and was skill. like like, uh, like I'm like I'm uh, Otto the pilot on uh, airplane. <laughs> remember where she had to reinflate him? Yeah, yeah, I and remember. It was on his belt buckle. Was yes. the uh, was the uh, the filler? And then he is his head turned with a smile on his face. Yeah. Hey, I think we got some calls here. Let's see if we can. Uh, oh, you want to do that get, now? Or? Well, we okay. can get. Okay. These are people looking for air machines. What's up? Rock one hundred two. Good morning. Who's this? Hey, what's going on? This is Darren from Sturbridge. Darren from Sturbridge. Okay. Hey, free air, my guy. You know where you get it on the Mass Pike. Believe it or not, it might cost you an arm and a leg, and it might cost you your life. But you can go on the Mass Pike and get free air. Where yeah. at the uh, no on the, uh, the rest stops? All the all the rest areas on the Mass Pike. Yeah, but I, all right. But what about like a local business other than the one? I'm not going to get on the pike just to go fill air oh, in my tire. Good, yeah, good luck, man. Good luck. You might bring your bank account because everybody's getting ripped off. It's Massachusetts. Damn. Let's go. Look at it. Look at the phone. All right, thanks, yeah, man. Hey, look hey, at the phone's blowing up over this air thing. All right, you want to keep going? Or hey, just oh, no. Oh, hey, right. come on. Let's do it. Rock 102. Good morning. Is this? Good morning. This is Linda. Hey, Linda. What's up? I'm, I'm letting you know where you can get free air in Chickabee, Sunoco. Sunoco. All right. Yep, Sunoco and Chickabee. Free air. Have a great day. All right. Okay. All right. Well, there you go. There's one uh, in Chickabee. Rock 102. Good morning. Is this? Hey, this is uh, Chris Haley. I'm from Chick- uh, from Holyoke. Well, so, okay. Where are you from? Is it Chickabee or Holyoke? Well, I work at Chickabee, but I'm from Holyoke. Oh, yeah, God, okay. It's confusing. Yeah, go ahead. What's up, man? 
So, so um, the other day I was listening to an ad on uh, Rock 102. Yeah. And it said, we're better for your health than the Roderick Ireland Courthouse. And I was like, oh, my God. My grandpa died of ALS that he got from the Roderick Ireland Courthouse. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Well, I was just, I was just kind of, I was kind of taken aback. I was just kind of taken aback by that. Well, first of all, we're not making fun of anybody who died at the, from the health complications of the Roderick Ireland Courthouse, and we apologize right. uh, that, right. uh, that, that, well, that your family member passed I'm not, away. I'm not filing a grievance. Well, I mean, it kind of does sound like you are, uh, but uh, we're pointing out the uh, the ridiculousness of how the state doesn't take care of the very problem that all of these people have come forward with Exactly. Uh, to complain right. about that's so, that's really our so focus. We're not being so insensitive if anything, about it. It's bringing awareness. Actually, exactly, that's exactly what we're yeah. doing. Now, yeah. of course, we are yeah. in another discussion about free air. So, yeah. uh, you yeah. know, like you to know, focus. Do you let's know, keep, you know let's, where you can find the. Yeah, keep our eyes on the prize here. Okay, we're going down there's one lane a, at a time. There's a gas station off of Memorial Drive. Oh, the uh, the old Hess station on Memorial Drive. Free air. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. All right. Well, thank All you right. very much. Yeah. All right. There you go. Free air. All right. Amen. That's that's take the American care, way. All okay. Right. There you go. Oh, man. Anyhow. Uh, yeah, op- we take a gamble whenever we do that. We sure do. Open line Friday coming up moments from Ooh, now. Look at the time. It's uh, <laughs> your Pioneer Valley forecast. Sunny today with a high of 63. Tomorrow, rainy with a high of 60. It's 40 right, uh, 42 right now in downtown Springfield. I'm Steve Nagel, and that's the news on Rock 102. Oh, yeah. Do with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. Uh, tomorrow... The uh, Rotary Club of West Springfield presents the Northeast All-Stars. Northeast All-Stars features uh, many of the area's top musicians, including uh, The Force, the members of uh, Alchemistics, uh, Lee Ross, the Deadheads uh, M.A., Tony T- Tony Lee uh, Thomas, the Tinkers, and many more. The best musicians from various bands will meet and treat everybody. So it's uh, it's 30 bucks. You'll uh, the, the best 30 bucks you'll ever spend. Tickets are available at westspringfieldrotaryclub.com. We also have... A, a pair of tickets to give away right now. 10th caller, 293-1021. Shows at the Morgan Pavilion in West Springfield. Gates open at 5. Music begins from 6 to 9. Should be a great night. And uh, and there you go. So 10th caller, 293-1021. Good luck to you. Uh, Yeah, well, I'll get to that in just a second. You're going to have to wait. To, you know, you're going to be calling. Well, I'm answering phone calls in there. People yeah. will be like, oh, you know, there's an air machine over on, uh, you know. Whatever. Yeah, I know. It's just a... Odd but timing. I didn't realize this. Uh, big Y, all the gas stations have free air. Really? Yeah. Well, way to go, Big Y. Uh, it's like my air supply. All I need is the air that I breathe. That's the Hollies. I'm sorry. Well, uh, I'm all out of love. I'm so lost without yeah. you. See, I think what you're trying to do is make yeah. nothing out of I'm making nothing, nothing out of all. all. That's what go. it was. Damn it. Damn it. That's what happens when you turn 45. You forget song uh, lyrics. Yeah, that's what you do. Oh, that's man, what you do. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Pax and Nagel on Rock 102. Here comes the money. Here we go. Money talk. Yeah. Springfield's Classic Rock. It's 809 and Guns and Roses with Pax and Nagel on Rock 102. It's uh, going to be uh, sunny today with a high of 63. Rainy tomorrow with a high of 60. Sun comes back out on Sunday, though, with a high of 61. It's 41 in downtown Springfield. Steve, before we get into this very popular radio feature on your birthday, uh-huh. uh, it is uh, incumbent upon me to announce today's keyword to cash. Are you ready for this? I am ready. All right. The keyword for cash is lucky. That's lucky, as in you will be lucky to win $1,000 today. It is spelled L-U-C-K-Y. Lucky. For those of you who have never been lucky, that's how you spell it. Go to the Keyword to Cash contest page on rock102.com. Enter lucky for your chance to win 1000 bucks. Good luck from Rock 102, Springfield's Classic Rock. All right. All right. Uh-huh. And now, live from the Richard Grieco Studios in East Long Meadow, Massachusetts, it's Open Live Friday! Rock 102, it is uh, Open Line Friday. Uh, again, a couple rules to follow for everybody. No filthy language. Keep your gross hate speech for some of the radio show who encourages that kind of thing. We do not. I will end that call faster than you can say, hey, um, happy birthday, Nagel. 
Uh, yeah, All that's right. right. You ready? Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, Rock 102, good morning. Who's this? Uh, this is Dirk from Chickabee. Is this the uh, studio line? Uh, yes, it is, Dirk. Uh, what, can, what can we do for you, Dirk? Uh, nothing. I just wanted to uh, call to uh, say what a great time I had last night. Wh- well, Where were you last night? Uh, I was at this uh, place. I don't know if you guys have heard of it, but uh, it is called the Lost Comedy Club in Chicopee. What? What are they? Euster Tavern. What do they do there on a Thursday night? Uh, every Thursday they have uh, dinner and yeah. comedy for twenty dollars. Wow, That's the best deal in town. Really? It's really unbelievable. Yeah, it's great. Oh, what did you have and, to eat uh, last night? Uh, you know, I had uh, I had pasta, meatballs. Uh, salad, all very delicious. Um, I have to say, uh, was really excited about the show. Real excited about seeing Steve Nagel. Well, yeah, I bet you were. And, and, and that Marty Caproni. Wow, what, what, yeah, he, what a, what. A, he, he was all right. He was. <laughs> he wasn't really on his game last night. <laughs> Oh, this is BS, you guys. This is BS. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, yeah. well, thanks, Dirk. I yeah. appreciate the call. Yeah. Hey, uh, wish that you had let us know it was your birthday. I uh, would have had a cake for you. feel like a real jerk this morning. No, that, that's all right. I, I don't want anybody to acknowledge my birthday except Dirk, everyone. Are, yeah, Dirk, are you just going to limit uh, when you feel like a, Dirk, a jerk to just this morning? <laughs> or yeah, is it a possibility think, uh, you could spread that around throughout the calendar year? I might, I might be Dirk, uh, depending on the shows that are coming up at Lost that uh, that are great. You know, uh, you know, I uh, I just happen to know that uh, uh, Saturday Joe Maki. Uh, yeah. oh, 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 really? <laughs> really? All yeah. right. Hey, wait. Uh, I I know you. <laughs> You you do you remember me? Yeah, you're dirt. You're my buddy who's into pregnant chicks. <laughs> <laughs> All Survey right. says yeah. you are right. <laughs> All right, Dirk. Well, we appreciate the call. Yeah. Lots of other people <laughs> trying to get in. Thanks, Dirk. Have yourself a good All day. Right. <laughs> right. Rock 102. Oh, yeah. yeah. Rock 102. Good morning. Who's this? Yeah, this is uh, Bill. Hey, Bill. Hey, Bill. Yeah, you guys are well informed. I was just wondering if you guys know when the Polish church in Indian Orchard serves at or starts selling the pierogies and the glumkies and the Polish plates. The Polish church that serves up galump, what is it, like an annual sale or something every year? Yeah, yeah, I can't find any information on that. It's uh, not anywhere on the uh, the internets, on the computers? Oh, the interweb? I do not have hey, that. Hey, you know, I, is this the uh, the Immaculate Conception Church on Parker Street? Yes, that's the one, yes. Yeah, I uh, I would uh, I would like to say I could find that information out, but our, our uh, internet moves as fast as the Catholic church itself. Ah, okay. Hey, hey, you know what? You know what? Uh, just keep listening. Maybe somebody will call in with the information. This will be like that, that old radio show they used to air on the AM station with the uh, with the tag sale. The guy would offer oh, up yeah, a thing, yeah. and then the guy would call up and say, I'll buy that organ for $500. Was it the Radio Tradio? I, I think it was something, yeah, like, something that. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was good. Oh, by the way, I do have an 83 old for sale, too. Oh, an 83 olds for sale. Okay, okay. well, we'll take bids on it, and we'll get back to you. All right, well, thanks so very much for the call. Good luck with the uh, the church. Uh, okay, uh, Rock 102, good morning. Who's this? Mike Jones. Uh, hey, Mike, you need an 83 olds mobile? Yes, please. Yeah, so, yeah, I bet you do. Uh, Rock 102, good morning. Who's this? This is uh, Tyler from uh, Bristol, Connecticut. How are you doing? Good, good Tyler. Tyler. You might want to turn your radio down just a, a little hair there. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just wanted to uh, give a shout out to uh, Pat Kelly. Does a wonderful afternoon show. I, I've known the guy for years. Always takes good care of the listeners. And uh, shout out to Darby down in Brooklyn. And I uh, just uh, love the show. Hope you guys have a great day. Can I? Can I ask you before you hang up? Can I just ask you this one simple question? How much did Pat Kelly pay Absolutely. you to call this show? Um, I. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, what I yeah, thought. Not yeah. disclosure agreement. I'm not at uh, liberty to do. Yeah, that's okay. what I thought. All right. Okay. All right. Have a thanks for the thanks for the call. Rock 102. Good morning. Who's this? It's the Hawkman. How are you guys doing? Good, Hawkman. Hawk What's, What's up, up, buddy? 
Hey, I want to wish Mr. Nagel a happy 65th birthday, oh, and <laughs> I, hope you, I hope you guys have a great time, and I'm sorry that you're so busy this weekend that you can't come to the car show tomorrow. Yeah, I'm sorry my uh, my kids' sports takes priority over uh, your, your car show. But uh, what's, uh, what, right. what car show is this, Hawkman? It's the car show tomorrow at um, McDonald's parking lot in Ware, the lovely town of Ware, from 10.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. There's no entry free, and all the coffee and donuts and muffins are on the Hawkman tomorrow. Oh, wow. look at that. Okay, see, donuts look, and muffins. Listen to you selling the sizzle on that thing. Way to go, Hawkman. Oh, and I, just one quick thing, you guys. I have a big bone to pick with both of you. Uh-oh. All right, what uh, what's going on with the bone? What gives you the right to use my my people's bathroom stall anywhere as you choose to want to go? <laughs> hey, listen, man. Uh, when nature calls, you got to use whatever's the first available. And I'm sorry if uh, you uh, happen to come in the bathroom and uh, I'm occupado on the toilet. Listen, uh, I, I use that bathroom out of respect for people like uh, for just like you. I mean, it's it's a... It's spacious. A man can really spread out in there, and I like it. Well, don't you both ever let me catch you in there, or I'll have to be using. Actually, you guys will have to help me out of my wheelchair on the toilet. So, hey, listen, man. Uh, instead of giving out muffins and donuts tomorrow, why don't you make like a quadriplegic charcuterie board <laughs> with like applesauce and pudding and like uh, mushed up uh, habanero chips? You know those ghost pepper chips you were eating. Well, I think that would be a oh. good, yeah. Oh, I think. Because uh, let's, let's face it, Steve, well, if you had a piece of pepperoni, you'd probably choke on it. Well, again? Yeah, <laughs> again, yeah. See, this is what I'm talking about. Oh, hey, listen, we, we kid because we love. Have a good weekend, Hawkman. All right, I love you guys. Bye-bye. Love you too, buddy. Right, thank you. Rock 102, good morning, who's this? Hey, how's it going, guys? This is John, the bus driver. What's John. up, John? Hey, uh, Bax, yesterday you were, uh, you were talking about George Kittle there and uh, what he had on his shirt underneath yeah. his uh, pads and jersey. Yes. You, you had mentioned that you had used some of those dirty words on the air four times. Yes. I was curious, what, what were those words? Were they the real dirty ones or were they just <sighs> you know, the little oopsies? All right. Well, o- over the course of like a 35, 36-year-long career, uh, the F words come out, uh, the S word has come out, and the word that begins with M. Oh, wow. I believe okay. the S word came out twice. Wow. Uh, yeah, the, I mean, listen, <laughs> the, uh, the the statute of limitations on that thing, as far as the FCC is concerned, there's no proof that it's ever been said, but I can guarantee you it's they came said. out of my mouth. Yeah. They really did. <laughs> Well, I'm a, I'm a long time listener. I've never I've never heard him come out of your mouth. So I, I was just curious. You know, the the S word we can let that slide. The, well, the F word eh, I can I can understand why they might uh, get you in a little trouble there. L- listen, if you want to hear him say those words, come on down to the comedy show on November second at MGM Roar for the uh, open pantry. I'm going to use every single one of them. I will be there. Yes, the thank awesome. you very, very there you much. Go. If for no other reason for then for me to say all those seven thirty words. Yes. That's all right. I just need to, I just need to hear them. Okay. He'll practice, right, practice, practice. I'll start using him in everyday conversation. How, how do you get to MGM Roar? Practice, practice, practice. practice, practice. Your, your vulgarity. There you go. All right. Thanks for the That's call. It. Guys. Uh, okay. Uh, He's Rock so lengthy one, today. Rock 102. Good morning. Who's this? Hey, this is Rob. Hey, Rob. What's up? Hey, yeah. Mushroom walks into a bar. Bartender says, we don't serve mushrooms here. He says, I'm not a mushroom. I'm a fun guy. Ah. All right. Classic. You know, why, you, you know why he had to leave? Because there wasn't much room. Ah! No, you did. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Go ahead. Rock 102, good morning. Is this? Well, good morning, Tom. And East Longmeadow, how you doing? Good, good Tom. What's up? Hey, as the, uh, the public service side, uh, the, the guy that was looking for the information on the uh, Polish of food? Yeah. That is October 21st, 11 to 5. All right. If that guy uh, called in before October, what is it? 21st? 21st. 21st, yep. Yeah. All right. Good uh, Good to know. All right. And, and other than that, happy birthday, Steve. We'll, uh, we'll see you at one of the functions here. All right. Thank you. Are you interested in 83 Oldsmobile? By any chance? 
no, I have uh, an '89 Jeep. I'm trying to sell. Oh, okay. Uh, well, there, there you go. go. We'll take your information, and then we'll uh, we'll put it on. I know we'll have somebody else to call in with a bid. <laughs> See you guys. Thanks. All right, uh, Rock 102. Good morning. Is this? Hey, good morning. It's Vince the Plumber. Hey, Vince. How are you? Very well, guys. Very well. Very well. So earlier conversation, you guys were asking about the free air. Most gas stations, as long as you're getting gas or you buy something from the convenience store, you can ask them to turn on the machine and they'll turn it on for free. Really? Are you sure yeah, about that? It's, no, it's it's pretty much kind of an unwritten rule that as long as yeah. you're a patron that paid for something, they will turn it on for free as long as they see you buying something. Somebody actually, so even if you get gas. Yeah, somebody said that's a mass state law that requires all gas stations to offer you free air if you have to go up to the clerk and tell them to turn the pump on. Same thing in Connecticut. Right. So yeah. you just wasted like right. five and, and a half bucks and getting Cal- air. And California, too. All right. All right. Well, when I go to California. Nice. So, all right, Vince. Now, real quick, got to do my shout out. God's sake. Everybody, go ahead. All, the, all the plumbing supply houses. My boy Derek over at Plimpton and Hills, uh, my buddy Keith over there. Oh, our Lord Savior Jesus Christ for my good buddy Keith again. Um, <laughs> that's really it. But All you right, guys Vince. have a great Friday the thirteenth. Happy right. birthday, Nagel. Thank Happy you. Happy birthday, Thank buddy. You. All right, there you go. Uh, Rock one hundred two. Good morning. Is this? Hey, good morning. This is Ray, the driver from Williamsburg. Hey, Ray, what's up? Well, I was calling in for the uh, open line. Am I too late? You are no. on the air right now. Oh, awesome. What's up? Hey, i got to ask you. Well, first of all, Steve, happy birthday. Well, thank you. Now, you guys do your news reports about, uh, like, courts and stuff like that. And whatever happened to the word pled, as in pled not guilty? I don't know. I always, I was, uh, I, I was corrected years ago. It was pleaded. Pleaded not guilty. No, pleaded what you have in your pants. Yeah. Uh, you know, it was like a pair of dress yeah, pants. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I, it, just, it, it used to, it, you used to hear it all of a sudden, they pled not guilty. But now all of a sudden, now it's pleaded. All right. Uh, uh, I, I don't know what to tell you, Ray. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, the times have changed. All right, and I got another question for you. Oh, you good. have an ad for, uh, for males with ED. Yes. So, <laughs> it says in the ad, if the test do- dose doesn't work, it's free. How exactly does that work? Do you bring your lady with you? If the test dose is working. <laughs> Who said anything about a lady? Why don't you come here and I'll show you. All right. That's enough. The two of yeah. you. Uh, you spent a lot of time thinking about this, didn't you, Ray? Um, well, you hear the ad every day, so, I mean. It's just when you hear <laughs> the test dose doesn't work, it's free. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, that's why you hold on to your receipts. How do you have a test dose in the office? <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know. that. We, we can find out, though. All right, Ray. Well, thank you very much. We appreciate the time today. Hey, not a problem. Have no, a great right. day. And, uh, enjoy your birthday. You right, too. There you go. That's, right, uh, right. that's, uh, that's great. No, so we can keep going. going. Come on. One what more? what do right. we got going? We got nothing. Nothing. Right. Rock 102. Good morning. Is this? This is Hosea. Hosea? Uh, All right, move on to the next okay, one. Okay. On. Uh, Rock 102, good morning. Who's this? This is Cheryl. Hi, Cheryl. What's up? Uh, calling for uh, Steve Nagel. Happy uh, birthday. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. And I'm also calling to tell you you went to the loft last night. Yeah. You hit it big time, you and Marty Capone. Great show. Second time there, me and my husband, and we'll be going back again. Oh, awesome. Oh, good. Well, thanks for coming out. How was the spaghetti and meatballs? And the, uh, spaghetti and meatballs. I'm looking forward to the chicken next time. Oh, yeah, yeah the yeah, chicken. They got some good food right. over there. You're not kidding. It's well, a great job what you guys are doing. Keep up the good work. Well, and uh, we're going November 2nd to see you in Baxi. Awesome. Nice. All right. Well, make sure you All say right. hi, Cheryl. I will. You've got it. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, thanks so much. Keep up the good work. Thank All right, you. thank All right, you. Bye-bye. Yeah, look at that. Right, how about that? Oh, he ended okay. on a nice note there. That is a nice note. Yeah. Thank you, Cheryl. That was a... It's only one call. Well, you know, because most of those calls were... T- they were taking up way too much time today. Yeah, What's I mean, What's going honestly, on with that? The, you know, the more you talk, the longer... The, the less time you give everybody else. A little consideration here. Yeah, that's a new rule we have to implement now. Yeah.
Keep it short. He, even Mike Jones <laughs> went long today. Usually he's the shortest one. <laughs> yeah, he was. Oh my God, it's 825 with Bax and Nagel at Rock 102. Rock 102 and Aquapump are giving you a chance. SoundCloud, Spotify, Google Podcast, and on rock102.com. All brought to you by ZM Home Buyers at ZMHomes.com and Rock 102, Springfield's Classic Rock. Hey, you know, uh, our friend there, right? That friend? Yeah. Yeah, he just uh, he was wishing me a happy birthday, and he asked me how old I was, and I said 45, and he goes, holy cow, you could be my son. And I go, I am your son. Don't you remember that Weeble you had a one-night stand with 45 <laughs> years ago? You know, the one that would wobble yeah. but just wouldn't fall the, down? The chick that looks like a thumb? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and this is the result. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, you know, there, 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 are, distance, some similar, there are some similarities. Yeah, I know, there are some similarities. I have the facial hair, though. Yeah, you know? well, yeah, you, yeah. You, you both have the male pattern baldness, yeah, so yeah. you got that going yeah, for you. Good stuff. You're both of, uh, of, 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 uh, of thick stock. No, no, no. I work a lot harder in my career. Oh, Jesus. oh that's oh, a shot boy. fire. That, right? Yes. There you go. It, something's going to be launched. It's 8.30. News is next to Rock 102. Here's your Western Mass News. It's 8.34 with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. It's time for news. It is brought to you by, hold on, I know here. Ah, Noonan Energy, reliable service for heating, cooling, electrical, and plumbing. Noonan.com. Here's local radio icon Steve Nagel. Thanks, Bax. A woman from South Hadley is making her final stretch to completely swim the entire length of the Connecticut River. In 2019, Carrie Castango began her goal to swim the entire 410-mile length of the Connecticut River. Each year, Carrie would swim a new section of the river between Memorial Day and Labor Day. She reached the halfway point in 2022 and was determined to be the first person to swim the entire length. She's a member of the Connecticut River Conservancy Board and currently works as a director of statistical operations at a clinical research organization. Her mission is to raise awareness of the river's significance and the efforts to keep it clean for future generations. Isn't that river uh, over the last few months been loaded with human waste? I love it. <laughs> That's what I thought. Yeah. Raw uh, sewage. Raw I love it. <laughs> I've been swimming in raw sewage all day. I love it. <laughs> and uh, I get what she's trying to do because she, I mean, the river is filthy. Trying to raise awareness. But do you, I don't know if swimming in it might be the safest or healthiest thing for a human body to be in there for that long. Well, And, and listen, I understand the idea of raising awareness, but I also understand the idea of raising awareness without putting your body in harm's way. And I think that all you got to do is like tell everybody you know, hey, you know that river is filthy. Yeah. And guess what? You've now raised awareness. You know the problem is once you get to like uh, the North End Bridge. Yeah. The fish are playing lawn darts with the heroin needles dropped in the water in there. So you come out and you look like a blowfish by the time you're done because you got all these yeah. pokey things hanging out of you. This is why they tell you not to like uh, you know, swim at the bottom of the. Uh, <laughs> Of the dam in uh, in Holyoke, because you walk out of there looking like a like a like a like a pin cushion. Yeah, because there's all kinds of stuff that's in there. That's right. That's where I want to go. Uh, that's where I want to go magnet fishing. It's probably a good place, but the current is too heavy there. I think you'd have to go a little bit, or maybe where that bridge, that one bridge, is right over the falls. Yeah, isn't it? you could do that. Oh, maybe I could do that. When's the last time you went out? I haven't been out in over a year. What? Yeah, I've been try. I was trying to hook up with my bu- my buddies into it. He's uh, he's uh, but he- then we don't have time to to go do it. And then I have another friend. She's into it, but uh, we haven't had time to go do it. So I gotta I gotta figure out a time. I'm so busy. Oh, I know you are doing great. You know, comedy shows. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, taking the Halloween celebration uh, yeah. away from uh, people. You know, yeah, that kind of I, thing. I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't take anything away. Oh, really? I was chosen. I was handpicked. All right, well, it doesn't be that way. Uh, yeah, on Sunday, Carrie will make her final swim in Old Lyme, Connecticut. She'll start at 1.30 p.m. from Ferry Landing State Park and swim 2.6 miles to the Long Island Sound. <laughs> the public is invited to watch at uh, Marine Deep Headquarters at uh, Ferry Road in Old Lyme and walk along the boardwalk as she swims. Oh, my God. This is like a, it's like a death wish. Yeah. I, I I like standing on the uh, on the dock going, 
Did you taste it yet? <laughs> Did you taste it? How does it smell when you're in it? Taste what? The baby Ruth's floating in the river. Uh, is that uh, like a, would that be like the golden shower award you win for for swimming that whole thing? I, I don't, uh, I don't have you know, any it's a, idea. It's a shower head, uh, you know, like, a, and then it's right. golden yes. you know, on the outside. Do you that, think that's, yes. that's kind of how that works? I'm pretty sure you're right. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Um, what else is going on in the news? Oh, lots, lots. There's lots. Uh, 51 arrests made in Holyoke over the last couple of days. Holyoke and police, uh, state police arrested more than 50 people Wednesday as part of an operation to combat violence and drug dealing in the city. The Holyoke police say a total of 51 people were arrested as part of Operation Holyoke Safe Streets, a zero-tolerance program to prevent violent crime, drug dealing, and other offenses. Holyoke Police Detective Hamill shared the uh, following results uh, with 22 News. He didn't share it with anything else. Well, they were the only ones who showed up. Uh, well, he said, I'm going to only give this to you because I like that kid that comes to the scene and tells everybody what he saw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that kid's got that kid knows journalism. 51 arrests uh, processed at uh, Holyoke Police Department and Mass State Police Barracks. Charges include outstanding warrants, firearm related charges. Again, I, this sounds like uh, Sally Struthers telling you all the things that are available at the DeVry Institute. Narcotics trafficking, narcotics distribution, narcotics possession, drug violation near a school or a park, reckless endangerment of a child, stolen motor vehicle, assault and battery on a police officer. Actually, you know what it sounds like? What? It it sounds like the uh, the list of side effects from like Ozempic. Oh yeah, like you're re- you're watching one of those drug yeah. commercials where they tell you you're gonna die if you you know some people have the experience. Yeah, I, my A one C dropped by two points and yeah. I feel great. Yeah. Side effects include outstanding warrants and firearm related <laughs> offenses, narcotics trafficking, narcotics distribution. They go on and on and on. Yeah. You think about that. Most commercials are 60 seconds when they run those things. Yeah. 30 of it is all the horrible things that drug could do to you, but 30 of it is just telling you, hey, you can take this and feel so much better. Except for the diarrhea and the uh, cramping <laughs> and the bleeding internally and the, the profuse vomiting yeah, is also the, the, the something concussions to think about. that you'll develop. Uh, uh, yeah, you know, the inability to achieve a, uh, a, a your, <laughs> yeah. your your firm erections that's yeah. going to be a problem for you too. B- benign brain tumors. Uh, you know, it's like all <laughs> right. these things. It's like why the hell would you want to take something like yeah, that? Yeah, pregnant women should not touch these pills. I don't think anybody should touch any of these pills. It, they're messing people up. Uh, Turtle Boy uh, blogger Aiden Kearney's arraignment on Wednesday brought to light discussions prosecutors say he had with Avon Police Department dispatcher as he tried to hunt down license plate information in connection with the Karen Reed case. The 41-year-old Kearney, or Kearney, whatever you call, was taken into custody by Mass State Police Wednesday morning on several charges, including eight counts of intimidating a witness, juror, police, or court official, three counts of picketing a court, judge or juror, and one count of conspiracy to intimidate a witness. Uh, Stoughton? Uh, Stoughton. Stoughton? You are a mental case. Hi, Ralph. Uh, judge released him on a personal recognizance hours later following his arraignment with a December 5th court follow-up uh, appearance to be scheduled. Kearney was arrested in connection with the Karen Reed case in which she, the girlfriend of Boston Police Officer John O'Keefe, is accused of killing O'Keefe. Prosecutors accuse Kearney of intimidating witnesses in that case including a state police trooper. His blog, TB Daily News, has scrutinized details about the Karen Reed case, <clears throat> suggesting a police cover-up is scapegoating uh, Reed for Ke- O'Keefe's death. During the arraignment, Special Prosecutor Kenneth Mello read through pages of details outlining events he said led to intimidation charges, prefaced with an explanation of Kearney's online presence through his website and social media accounts, including Facebook, YouTube, and X. So here's, uh, here's my question. <clears throat> Whether or not you read uh, Turtle Boy's uh, blog or not, or, or regardless of what your opinion may yeah. be, <clears throat> seems to me that you have to—it's a very—you have to make a very good case that actual harassment happened, or he wasn't just exercising his right for free, free speech. Right. There's a lot. There's a lot. This is gray area here. It's a very I, gray area. Because I, I think for the most part, what he has done is exercise, you know, your right to free press, right to free speech. Some of the things that he is doing here are 
some things that other legitimate reporters have done, you know, freedom of information information, mm-hmm. you know, trying to get to, uh, other details, arrest reports. That's not harassment. That can sometimes be known as news gathering. What? I know. Journalism? But because he's a blogger, you know, then people just assume, well, this is harassment rather than reporting. Again, I don't know how. I mean, I told you years ago, I reluctantly went to that Hillary Clinton rally down at uh, at the Springfield Museums because they gave us a press pass. They said, you want a press pass? And I'm like, you know what? I'd like to see what this whole press pass thing was with, with, with a presidential candidate you know, yeah. coming through town. So fine. I go down there and I'm talking to Ray Herschel. Ray Herschel's standing there. Yeah. The yep. old classic Ray Herschel guy, and he's uh, and I and I said to him, it's just him and I. I I only know him, and I go, who are all of these people in this press box? And he goes, bloggers. They're all bloggers. You don't even need a journalism degree anymore. You can just go on the internet and write yep. whatever the hell you want. And at that point, he threw his microphone down to the yeah. ground and walked away in disgust. Uh, the, the the issue I think one of the issues. For this turtle boy thing, it says what happened with the Mass State Dispatcher uh, in court Wednesday. The special prosecutor discussed the circumstances that contributed to the charge of conspiracy to intimidate a witness. Mello told the judge uh, Kearney messaged with a local police dispatcher to unlawfully get personal information from license plates on cars parked in September at the home of Michael and Elizabeth Proctor of Canton. Proctor is the Mass State Police Trooper assigned to the Karen Reed Criminal Investigation. According to court documents, using the Facebook account of uh, Clarence Woods Emerson, a pseudonym Mello said Kearney uses, Emerson posted the question on September 5th, anyone in Canton want to take a couple of pictures from me? DM me, please. He updated the post 27 minutes later with, update, all set, thanks. That night, Kearney posted on uh, X the message with a photo of the Proctor's home and a vehicle he said belonged to Jennifer McCabe, who authorities said was with O'Keefe and Reed at the Waterfall Bar and Grill in Canton before his death. Court documents say Kearney claimed in a YouTube video that the next day he quote ran the plates. See, you're not you're not allowed to run plates. Like okay. you can't you and I can't just go on the RMV website and run a license plate. You have to know somebody, like a cop or somebody who works in an R, the RMV in order to run that place. Mass State Police conducted a criminal justice information service audit to look for any inquiries into McCabe's or other Proctor's vehicles. All three were queried by Avon Police Dis- uh, Dispatcher Janelle Webb. Uh, Avon uh, Police uh, Chief Jeffrey Bukunt announced Wednesday that uh, Police Dispatcher was placed on oh administrative leave, although he did not name the person. Um, uh, there's obtaining information, and then there's obtaining information illegally. So that's what this case is about. I'm not... Right, but, but, but I'm just the thing saying. is, if you're if you're asking the police department to give you stuff that they're not going to give you, all they have to do is say no. Right. What but, laws are being broken there by just asking the question? But this dispatcher gave. They're accusing this dispatcher of giving him the information. So the person who's committed an illegal act is the dispatcher who gave it to them. Right. Not Turtle Boy. Turtle right. Boy that's, asked the question. That, that's what I'm saying. Yes. That's what this case is about. I got to tell you, I don't think they got much on him. Well, uh, but again, if the police want to prosecute you somehow, you know, what's that old adage? You can you can indict a ham sandwich. Yeah, but all Turtle Boy really needs is to have a very good lawyer. I'm sure he has one. I don't know. I would imagine a guy like him who's been doing this for so many years and causing all kinds of, uh, you know, ruffle and feathers with people who weren't happy with the way he exposed them i'm sure he's got a lawyer i should reach out to him and say hey listen turtle boy i know a couple of guys lawyers that you can talk to yeah lawyers you can talk to and did you also know that on thursday nights in chicopee you can get a comedy and dinner show for twenty dollars well, forget about this Turtle Boy story. Yeah. What's this all? What's this sorcery you talk about? Oh, well, you know what, Bax? If I had the time, I'd tell you about oh, it. We it's, are, uh, yeah, yeah, we're, yeah, we're getting late. Hey, uh, it's going to be uh, sunny today with a high of 63. Tomorrow, rainy with a high of 60. It's 41 right now in downtown Springfield. I'm Steve Nagel, and that's the news on Rock 102. Ah, oh, yeah. We see the Rock 102 Springfield's Classic Rock. It's 854 and Van Halen with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. <sighs> I am exhausted. 
We had a late night, uh, late night last night. Yeah. You got uh, you got your birthday today. You going yeah. to a movie? You know the uh, the problem with doing a show at uh, you know the show let out around like ten fifteen or so. You know by the time it was all done, right? And uh, I get home and I'm like I'm like lying in bed, like just wide awake, wide awake, because you can't come down off of the of a, you get all that adrenaline. You wow. you just did something. You can't just come down off of that and go. Yeah, so I'm going to take a nice three-hour nap and come into work later on today. Yeah, yeah. You, you, there's, there's no way. Yeah. There's no way to truly do both and survive because yeah. you just exactly that. The, you, the adrenaline that's in you just keeps you up all night long. Yeah, I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna have to. Uh, I go take a nap. I guess maybe. Uh, you know. Have some of the devil's lettuce, sure, to relax a little mm-hmm. bit, and then uh, enjoy my uh, my day by myself until I have to go to a movie later on tonight. There you go. There you go. Got nothing going on tomorrow. Let me tell you something. Hockey is back in Springfield, and tomorrow you can hang out with the Rock Two Road Crew. The Springfield Thunderbirds open up their regular season tomorrow at the Mass Mutual Center against the Hartford Wolfpack. So great to have the Thunderbirds, uh, you know, back in business. The Road Crew will be on the uh, at the Plaza at MGM Springfield for the Community Bank pregame block party from four to six. The fun for the entire family. It's opening night at the Thunderbirds this Saturday night with Rock 102 Springfield's Classic Rock. All right. Do yourself a favor. Support the team. Do yourself a favor. Support the team. That's the way it should be. Kind of like uh, saying that, like a, like you're a strong hand. Like you're a, you support this team or not, you know. I'm not, I'm not here to intimidate it. What do you think I am, T- Turtle Boy? I'm not here to intimidate anybody. <laughs> I'm just here to, just, just to let everybody know that if you're looking for some uh an evening of family fun. I can't think of anything better than to bring the whole family to the plaza right. at MGM to support the the Thunderbirds. Yeah, that's actually a great thing. Thunderbird games are a lot of fun. And by the way, there's plenty of free parking at uh, at MGM. Just letting you know. Yeah, as uh well, if they fill up uh, at MGM, there's plenty of free parking down at the Basketball Hall of Fame down the street, too. Yeah, that that lot's practically yeah. uh, empty. Why not? <clears throat> but that, uh, you know, apparently at some point uh, they'll start uh, rebuilding the parking garage <laughs> Bruce landed away at some point. Well, it, you know, they're, they're construction projects. It's just like anything else. It takes, you know, years to kind of everybody come to an agreement of how this is going to be done, what's it going to be done. It takes time. But I bet you by the time it's done, it's going to be uh, it's going to be fantastic. I mean, nice uh, well, the, parking. The there. plans <laughs> for it, as uh, they were explained to us. Sounds like a wicked fun idea. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to say, parking garage? Fun? How could that be? No, they're talking about making that into like a... Like a little, like a yawky way of, yeah. of, of, of Western Massachusetts. You, you, yeah. shut down, you shut down the street. People have access to the uh, the garage. There's supposed to be, uh, you know, retail and restaurants on the, on the bottom floor. That that uh, that wall that separates that, surf, that, that surface lot from yeah. the, the marketplace, that's coming down. That surface lot's going to be... Uh, turned into like a like a, a park for the Thunderbirds and other events. I'm gonna tell you that sounds like a, a damn fine time. Well, they're gonna they're gonna pave paradise and put up a parking put lot. up a parking lot. Yeah. yeah. All right. I'm on to this thing. I see what's going on here. You and your Joni Mitchell get it all uh, figured out. Yeah, it's the Joni Mitchell Architecture Company. I saw what they did there. It's uh, eight fifty. Uh, that tree museum down the street's doing a hell of a deal. <laughs> right. Yeah. Two buy one get one free today. It's 858 to Rock 102. Want to know what it sounds like to win $1,000? Oh, my God. I can't.